So you said that from the very beginning, you had a goal that you wanted to wake up and not have to go and perform any mental or physical energy in exchange for money. And that that was kind of your goal from the very beginning. Um, did when you harness that goal, when you you know got that goal together, did that transform into I need this many single family rentals and it, that would cash flow X amount of money a month, and so that that would put together this grand plan? You know, I was thinking I was going to need fifty of them, and one time I'm sitting with Jack Beller, and he said, "No, you don't need that. You just need ten. That's what he said. And uh, we've had as many with me and my sons over a hundred at one time, 120 or 30 or long in there. And mm -hmm. we're, we're down. We don't have near that many now. Um, right. And, and, and that's a good thing. You know, uh, I don't want it to be the tail that wags the dog in my case. And there's a point right. in your life when uh, freedom and peace, actually freedom and peace should be everyone's ultimate goal and it's different for everyone and you can make a list freedom from our freedom to kind of deals mm -hmm. uh, and uh and just the peace that comes with that and that's the most important thing in life is freedom and peace and you can you you need to have a certain number of uh, amount of income that uh you know will supply you with all your basic needs and then where you can go do other things that you want to do. And a lot of people ask all the time, well, how many houses do you have? How many houses do you have? You know, I've got, I've got 70 and I've got 90. And, and see, to me, that means absolutely zero. What, what if they have those on short-term financing and they got balloons coming due? Or what if they're not cash flowing? What if they're not able to manage it? And what really matters is how much you go to the bank with every month. And, right. uh, you know, you can have two houses side by side, both of them exactly the same, built by the same builder, same school district, same taxes, same everything. And one can be a great investment and the other one be a very poor investment. And there's one word that, that um, and, I, and I, I'll add two words to it. It's financing and it's safe financing right. can make one a great, mm -hmm. great investment and the other one not. So if you if you have um, uh, good, safe financing without the balloons, you know, balloons are for clowns. You, I know you've heard that. That's right. <laughs> and um, uh, and in your cash flow, you're covering all your expenses and, you know, a reserve for maintenance and then a little bit to put in your pocket for management. Uh, are free and clear. And, and then that starts to make a, a big difference. You know, a guy with 15 right. clear, free and clear houses is way better than a guy with 100 houses that uh, might be having loans come and do or whatever, you know. You know, it's not how many chickens you have, but how many you have that's laying. That's right. And just like Gary Johnson said, you know, if, if I came up to you and told you I have a hundred rental properties, what would that make you, how would, how would you react? And a lot of people in the room said, wow, that's impressive. He said, but what if I told you none of them cash flowed and that just changes your perception of it. Exactly. And, you know, when I tell people, you know, how many homes we have in our portfolio, my wife and I, um, they have a hard time rationalizing. How do you make financial freedom. How are you financially free with only 16 houses? And mm -hmm. it's just like you said, it's the financing. We bought mm -hmm. them smart and we financed them smart. So, mm -hmm. and that's one of those things that we knew going into this, that we had to avoid all those pitfalls that investors that went belly up in 08 went through. We had to mm -hmm. avoid that. And a lot that of is that is your uh, financing with arms, the adjustable mm -hmm. rate mortgages, or financing mm -hmm. with balloons. So okay. we completely avoided that. That's good. That's really good. You know, I've been even, uh, 08, and I've been through other rough times, like in 1980. Uh, by then, mm -hmm. I'd accumulated some houses. And, uh, uh, you know, it's except for one instance there, which I worked my way through. That's a whole show story about that one deal. But, um, and in and, and, uh, 08, it was like, hey, 
just collect rent and go do your thing, you know, it's, and we did pick up some more real estate during that time, which was good. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course we still do. And, and, you know, let me just throw out something. I was thinking uh, yesterday and it never came up on any one of the other podcasts, but I was trying to think back. I think I have in 47 years only went to the bank or mortgage company to buy three different properties in all that time. It's either been subject to owner finance, lots of owner finance stuff. Um, and now I have refinanced some, but I didn't go mm -hmm. get money to go buy it. And only right. on three properties. And one of those was using my VA loan to buy a duplex and live in one side of it right when I got out of the military. <laughs> so. Oh, yes. Well, thank you for your service, Mr. Leon. We appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so.